Nicky, are you excited heading into the first round of the league this weekend? Not overly, to be honest about it. Now, as it happens, I won't be actually at the Kilkenny match because we have a far more important game locally with the Leinster Colleges final taking place between St. Kieran's and Offaly Schools. Another interesting development from an Offaly perspective, actually, Michael will probably want to touch on that as well. So as it happens, I'm not going to Antrim because of that. I uh, wasn't sure if that's going to be played because Colossia Cullum from Tullamore are actually playing a Leinster semi-final in senior football on Friday and they have three players from that school taking part on Saturday. So it's a bit stretched to ask the, the, the young lads to play two big matches one day after the other. So I'm a bit surprised that both games are going ahead. So no, that's what I'm on duty on Saturday. And uh, But uh, thanks to uh, GA Go, I'll be keeping an eye on the game in Antrim. Yeah, how do you think that, that Leinster final will go? In uh, very interesting. Now, I uh, covered Cairns and Colossian Owen last week. Cairns, they were generally on top in the, in the first half, but Colossian Owen got a goal just before half time uh, from um, Dara Purcell, or uh, David Purcell, I think it was, the brother of Dara, who's playing on the Dublin Sean? senior team. Was it Sean? And, uh, sh- no. But David or Sean, I'm not sure which of it was. Oh, now. But they, they scored a goal just before half time, got it back to four points. But Kieran's are very dominant in the second half. Interestingly, had two players back that hadn't played for a couple of months Bobby Murphy, the leash minor, and uh, Bill Hughes. Now, Bill Hughes is a huge man from Venice Bridge. Uh, got a lot of injuries actually. Played in goal, uh, played in goal for soccer, I think, for Waterford uh, to, at youth level. But he's a huge, big man and a very good hurler. Now they're back, but they didn't have Harry Shine and um, Ben Whishy, who are again two really good forwards. But the Offaly schools are doing very well. I saw Burr uh, comfortably defeat uh, Castle Comer in the B uh, semi final uh, last Thursday as well. And uh, I'd expect I think Kilcormick might be coming up on the other side. So you're going to have two Offaly schools in B Leinster. But it'll be look. This will be a good match on Saturday. This is effectively is an awfully under nineteen team, and uh, maybe an under twenty player or two in it as well. So it is their county squad, and Leo Connor is also involved in it. So they're uh, this is um, maybe a real uh, opportunity for Offaly to they have their under twenty campaign really up and well with this particular outfit of player. So it'll be a cracking game in Kilkenny. Shots fired, Michael. No, I'd be, I'd be straight with you, Nicky. From an awfully point of view, this development couldn't have come at a better time. Like, like basically striking while the iron is hot. I think it's really interesting playing. They're playing Cairns, obviously, in Nolan Park. The last time the vast mass, vast mass majority of these lads played in Nolan Park, they, you know, had the biggest heartbreak of their lives. I would say, nearly definitely of their hurling careers. Anyway, when Tip caught them at the end, um, just something interesting to note. Like, Cairns lads are obviously training together the whole time themselves. Offaly are training very, very little, uh, essentially just playing the games because they're all involved with their colleges. As you said, there's three lads. I think it's uh, Owen Burke, uh, Tara Guinan and Killian Martin are involved with Colossal Column in the football. All right. the all the uh, Brennan's lads are involved with Brennan's. All the Kilcormick lads are involved with Colossal and Ave Cormac. Uh, so they're not together that much, but it is a pretty star-studded team. Um, and it's going to be interesting. Where's Killian Cork in line out, actually, for, for Kieran's Nicky? Well, he... he... Actually, he wasn't pencil to start last week because they thought he might be injured after the Shamrocks game. Remember, he came off towards the end of the game. Oh, yeah. But he did start at cornerback. He was absolutely outstanding. And uh, so he uh, they took him off in the last 10 minutes at that stage. That, so, uh, that's yeah, he's, gas, he's, he's, he, t- he tweeted me from Gorham Park on Thursday. They were definitely enjoying themselves. And two days later, he's starting a cornerback. So oh, they were. They did recover quickly. They did enjoy themselves, in fairness, and I think they enjoyed themselves over the weekend as well. But a very unusual scenario in that Kieran's team last uh, Saturday. You had Killian Corcoran and Niall Shortle, just fresh from winning Club All Ireland finals in Croke Park the previous Sunday. And you had Killian Dial, who's the captain of the Kieran's team, actually came on as a sub for a few moments against Wexford in the Welsh Cup. So where have we seen colleges players playing at such an elite uh, senior level? I tell you, lads, it's, kind of, it's a young man's game now. Yeah, but you were supposed to do a few years of s and before before you were able to compete with adults before. Remember, like, Kenny used to have lads sitting on the panel for two or three years before really establishing themselves at 23 or 4, Nicky? Yeah, no, it's a fair, it's a fair point. Okay, well, Niall, Niall Shartle and Killian Corkin haven't played at uh, inter-county level. I mean, Killian Niall got a run, all right, and uh, maybe he'll make the squad for the league, I'm not sure. Um, but in fairness to Derek Ling, and I know we'll be coming on to that later on, he's brought on a number of players from the under-20 squad, and I think the purpose of that... It's not so much that he's going to throw him in immediately, but they need to get into the, the whole groove of what it's like to be part of an elite senior squad, the sort of work you have to do to build yourself up to become part of that squad. And while he might not have any great expectations for this year or maybe next year, this is a, this is a process they have to go through now in order to uh, 
become inter-county players. I mean, they wouldn't match up to the physique of, say, the Limerick players at the moment at all. But nevertheless, they've been doing okay. I mean, Billy Drennan has had a very successful Walsh Cup. He was injured the last day, uh, couldn't play against Wexford. So it could be very interesting how uh, Derry Thing will line out his team on Sunday. Will, will he go revert back to the more established players? Or will some of these lads get a chance, which I suspect maybe they might. Yeah, a final question then on this Leinster final. How did Aaron McAvoy and Anthony Ireland Wall play for Kieran's? Uh, they played well. McAvoy was in the middle of the field. He actually was the partner to Killian Dial in the middle of the field and played very well. Was very good on freeze, very accurate on freeze. Anthony Ireland Wall, 10, uh, got a couple of points, worked hard. Player now that has a bit of experience. Kenny for a few years and uh, but his club colleague Ben Whitty was missing who was a big loss and Harry Shine who actually couldn't play in the under 20 all Ireland last year and uh, he, he's had hamstring trouble uh, which he also pulled it again having went back to play with his club in under 21 last year which was probably a bit risky playing him anyway because he hadn't been fully covered so he's struggling now and um, but those two guys there McAvoy and Wall uh, good good players good players but look Michael put his finger on it the uh, off the chaps are coming to Nolan Park a scene of huge disappointment for them. They almost they had one hand on the uh, All Ireland Trophy. So look, it's not a venue that they'll have any problem with. They'll uh, they'll be comfortable there, and it'll be a, a cracking game, I think. So this weekend, it's the first time since 1998 that Kilkenny have been managed competitively by anyone outside of Brian Cody. Can you remember that? Kilke- Obviously, you do. You you were there as a player and a manager in different eras, Nicky. But if you were to try and think back of Kilkenny early to mid 90s, pre Cody, what what do you think of when you think of that Kilkenny era? Well, first of all, during the early parts that uh, those nineties, I was county chairman, and as county chairman, you were also county. Uh, you were also a selector on the team. Uh, so I was a, I was a selector for four years uh, with Ali Walsh, and during that period, obviously, our most of, we lost the first All Ireland to Tipperary. Tip probably deserved to win it, to be fair, but still a deflected free fight to Cleary off Liam Welch's hurley into the back of the net. I, what did you say? Acute free. Yeah, that's okay. That's allowed as well. I can't argue with you there. But the result might look maybe it was maybe it was different. I don't know. But I I will say that after we lost that final, I mean how times have changed. Uh the whole panel and uh, partners and everyone went off for a long weekend to Clare. And uh, you know, we uh, thought about it and we had a couple of team meetings and uh, came back invigorated for ninety two and uh, clearly it worked. The weather the the temperature in Clare and the weather in Clare was good. We came back and won 92 and 93 league and uh, championship double after that. That's something that will be fondly remembered. I, after Ollie left, I got involved in managing the team myself. Wouldn't consider it. Uh, well, I always felt it was probably going to be a case of bringing on a number of people and handing them on to the next person. I did not have any ambitions to stay there for too long. It wasn't a successful period, albeit we were maybe a little, a little unlucky along the way. But we did. It did. That was the great period of uh, Wexford and Clare. And in the overall context of the hurling history, wasn't that great as well? But I mean, Cody came on in the in the late nineties. I suppose wasn't an absolutely sh- shoe in for for the role, but there wasn't too many people out there for it. And as they say, the rest is history. But probably the defining moment in Brian Cody's career for me will always be a day I had an interest in myself because I was present at the time. Was the All Ireland final of two thousand and six, the day that Kenny deprived Cork of winning the three in a row. That was the day that after breakfast in Undercroke Park, uh, there's a, used, I'm not sure what happens now, but you have breakfast with a few people under the stand. I told Lee Mulvey we'd go out and look at the pitch. And uh, I nearly died when I saw how high the grass was. And the grass had been cut by the groundsman the previous evening, but it was a very, uh, the, 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 whatever way the temperature was that night, the grass actually grew overnight. I said, there'll be a warder here. They'll say that I got the grass set up on this. And even as late as a couple of months ago, when Donald O'Cusick was talking on the Sunday game, he referred to the height of the grass in 2006. Um, so he didn't he didn't forget about it. But I, but Kilkenny defeating Cork in 2006 was the I, I believe was the, the defining game in Brian Cody's uh, in for county career because any lost that match, I'm not sure what would have happened. But winning it and um, the team just propelled on to greater things thereafter. Nicky, can I just come in quickly? Did you say as county chairman? That you were like it was, it was part of the deal was being a selector with the senior hurling team as well. Yeah, at that stage, yeah, I was the last of the county chairman that the, the chairman was automatically one of the selectors. 
yeah, yeah. It's that a great was, way, that great was... way to get yourself in on the county setup if you wanted to. Like, just go go bald headed for chairman, and you're in. Like Jesus, uh, you couldn't do it now. Like, it's mad to think. The no, I, of, Michael, yeah. I, I I I agree with you, and I mean, really, could I do it then? I mean, time wise, I mean, yeah. I, was, I was I was never at home. It was just chaotic. Now I only live about seven or eight minutes from Kilkenny, and that was a help. So if you were living a long distance. It could be, and I mean, obviously, you were expected to be a lot, a lot of training sessions and all of that as well. Um, but it was a, look, there were very different times. I mean, the physical preparation of the team was not like now, where you uh, where you players spend so much time in the gym. I mean, you had you, you had to work on your own, and there was a level of gym work, but it was not as sophisticated. The scale of sports science attached to inter county teams then no comparison to where it is now. It doesn't even it doesn't even fit on the same page. Just. Uh... Uh, your days on the side manager, is there any good or bad, any day that really sticks out when you were walking the sideline uh, in a big game at Kilkenny? Probably, yeah, one that sticks out a mile, actually, was uh, the quarterfinal against uh, Galway in Thurles. Uh, we were playing Thurles, or again, uh, yeah, against Galway, and going in at half time, we were down 11 points, and there was Kilkenny uh, supporters were absolutely livid. I, they would have, they would have ate me and spit me back out again, got in. <laughs> Going into the dressing room at half time, but ironically, we went in and uh, you know what's one going to do now? There was no point in getting out of hurley and breaking it off the table. That just was nonsense talk. So we had a calm and collected talk, and we chatted to the players. And within a within a relatively short period of time in the resumption, we were back level. I mean, Kerry was great. John Power came, was involved. Came on, and uh, we ended up winning that match. So I'll always remember that game. The only big downside of that game was that um, I lost Michael Titchfield and Liam Simpson, my full back and full forward, who couldn't play with Clare in the subsequent All-Ireland final the next day. And uh, Clare won that game by four points. So I'll always think about what might have been the case. But look, such is life. You just get on with it. But did I, en- I, I can't say I enjoyed the whole experience of being manager for all that much, even though I did manage a successful team to win another 21. But I had look, I enjoyed myself as Ollie's kind of right-hand man for a couple of years. But look, Times move on and said you were wearing two hats because you had the the, the, the boardroom to think of you could use that terminology as well about lots of things were happening in Kilkenny. We were changing a lot of structures around competitions and other things. So yeah, it was a busy time. Yeah, Porter Porter asked, what's Cody like as a player in the dress? Yeah. Well, very hard to say. I mean, I, I played just finals with Cody. And Cody was part of the team that won the 13 aside all Ireland Colleges final in 71. And I mean, he was probably just like any other player and obviously would have played with, him with Kilkenny for, for a number of years as well. Uh, and he would have had a longer career, but for that dodgy knee that he had. And, uh, um, and he was just like any other players. I mean, there was, there was uh, I suppose, nothing to believe that uh, there was, he was going to have a career as an inter-county manager that would be so lo- such, such longevity, uh, would be so successful. Um, and, and I think Cody, in fairness, would always say that point. he brought a unique style to the game and he needed to be very kind of hard on players and make hard calls and he did that along the way and maybe didn't make lost some friends maybe along the way if I could put it that way but such is inter-county managership but I mean he will always say that he had the most uh, incredible players along the road as well I mean you can be the best manager in the world but you need the, you need the, the, the ingredients to, to get that mix right and Brian would be the first to admit that but did I see it during my own time coming up not really, not really, to be honest with you. Yeah. And um, what have you seen so far from Derek Ling? A couple of the games I saw against Antrim, you know, won the game, had a great start, not over impressive, and then a little bit hit and miss against Wexford uh, in the other game that I saw. I think the difficulty with Derek is that he's probably been trying 40 players maybe so far uh, throughout that. So he's more or less, often in a case like that, it's a case of... Uh, uh, maybe players being used and to see can they cut it at all if not cut them from the cut them from the squad and that so very very hard to say uh, what he's learned I mean he's got a, some of the younger players have done well I mentioned Billy Drennan there in the first two matches I mean he had uh, great games against Leash and against Offaly but I mean you know and I suppose he, what did Drennan show on that he showed that look he could be up for this but Billy is from a junior club Galmai and I, I've all I've long long said that as it is very difficult for a junior club player like Kenny to make the, the senior squad. So, in my view, Billy is, needs to be part of the squad for a period. Get into the whole uh, area of the, the physically developing stronger, being part of the squad, getting into the training pitch and experience in chas- clashing against senior club hurlers on a regular basis. And and that's the one way you'll bring you'll bring the game on. So, it, it's very hard to know. Kenny did not have the Shamrocks players. I, I think some of them might be back at the weekend. I see Owen Cody scored one twelve for 
uh, SETU Carroll last night in the Fitzgibbon. So he's obviously um, back in action with them. And maybe as captain, he might be keen to lean Kilkenny out on, uh, in Corrigan Park on uh, Saturday. So um, we just don't know who Kilkenny will have. And there's a few other lads haven't kind of come back fully yet. We have seen not seen anything of much of Hugh Lawler, I think, Owen Murphy. Uh, and then there's the Shamrocks guys as well. So it's it's very hard to know what team they will put out, given that he's been uh, trying a lot of uh, new players and seeing what they might show up in the league. So or in the, in the Welsh Cup, and obviously the selectors have formed opinions about those. And let's see, we're all looking forward to see what Derek's first uh, official team will be. Really, mm, Michael, is there a pressure on Derek locally, Nicky, or like you know when? You know, when Sean Boylan was replaced, there becomes an expectation or a pressure with succeeding, you know, someone who's had such a successful reign. Same with Ryan Cody. Is there a pressure or expectation or is there a realism? Like, you can't, don't get me wrong, Kilkenny weren't far away. Of course they weren't. They're only beating two points in the ireland final. But does he carry this, as much pressure maybe as he maybe thought the successor to Brian Cody would have carried? And there's no pressure, I don't believe, I believe, at this point in time. I mean, look, at obviously the, the clock starts probably from Saturday. Welsh Cup, forget that. That's an opportunity to try out players that I've just alluded to. But I think uh, there'll be no great pressure on. Look, if Kilkenny are being beaten and beaten heavily in every match, maybe you'll hear the rumblings behind the scenes. But certainly he's not going into this game. He's seen as a, as a good, genuine guy who worked with Cody as a selector for many years. He was a diligent, hardworking uh, midfielder who took on responsibility in his own playing days. Uh, he's a good guy uh, in, in many ways as well. Uh, he'll be a sincere guy. He'll be an honest guy. He'll demand of his players uh, only what he would have been prepared to do himself. So that's the sort of guy. So th there's no pressure at the moment. I think people in Kilkenny are prepared to just give him, a, you know, cut him a bit of slack now for the, for for the, for this period. We're coming into a National League, lads, in fairness, where, you know, there's not going to be enormous pressure on any teams. The National League is now... Is now the the preparation for the uh, for the the hurling championship, which is a different type of competition. So it's it's unlike the football league. It doesn't. It's not likely to have the same competitive edge per se. Now that doesn't mean that Kenny won't want to go out and win every match and all the rest of it. But it doesn't have the same sort of implications. And there will be a level, I think, across all the teams of continuing to. Uh, evolve the structure of their teams, evolve players from different uh, in different positions to see what can work come the championship because this is the opportunity to get things right. Because once the ball is thrown in in the first round of the championships in the two cha in the two uh, provinces, then I think you're going to see the real serious hurling for this year. Yeah, I let's ask it. Sorry, go on, Shane. What I was just going to say, Led Zeppelin said, Are you going to preview the hurling league or was it done on a different stream? No, we're doing it here. We're doing it here. We're starting off with Kikenny though. Michael, jump in. Can I just ask you, Nikki? Um, the league has kind of lost its kind of jeopardy, yeah. shall we say. There's no, you know, no apart from probably, you know, Leash, Westmead and Antrim in Division 1A, and Group 1A and Group 1B, you know, there's no one really, none of the big teams are going to get ready to get or anything like that. Like, do teams actually want to get to the final at this stage? Is it a bit mad that we have a league scenario, you know, for two months and then we're going into another league in the... The Munster and Leinster leagues has the league lost a lot of his appeal? I don't, I don't know, or a lot of people as enthused by it maybe as they would have been before. Well, that's exactly the point that we're kind of alluding to, Michael. You're right. I think it has lost some of its lore in the, from that perspective. But I would say this: that um, in the Wilson crowds going out to matches, and at the end of the day, if you get to the latter stages of the league, there's a very decent payout to the counties in terms of uh, of uh, revenue and also that, and it's also a contributor to the J uh, player injury scheme. So. It, that that aspect of it, it, it is important. But I think you're right. I think uh, I do think the league will generally be used by all counties. We saw last year with uh, with Limerick in the National League. They really knew that they only had to beat Offaly to stay in division in the, in the top division. And John Coyley was prepared to do that to try out players and give them an opportunity. Uh, and you're generally going to see that. Now, having said that, I think Cork would want to win the league this year for their own sake. I think it would be uh, psychologically, I think it would be good for them. It's hard to see Davy not going into a not going into a competition and not wanting to win it. But I would say of all the teams that are playing in the league, I'd say Cork, um, possibly followed by Galway, are the teams that maybe because of um, Henry's second year and uh, Pat Ryan wanting to win something with Cork, they probably have the most requirements in terms of winning the league this year. It's probably that same pressure wouldn't be on, say, Derek King and Kenny uh, to win the league this year. I believe. I think he had to be great if he did it, but it's not going to. It's not going to lose a nice sleep over if he doesn't. But I do think Cork are the team that probably more so than anybody uh, would like to get their hands on silverware, maybe to just get something back into the county. 
Yeah. Do, do you find it hard to predict how this season will go outside of Limerick? We know they're going to be very strong, but there's so many man managerial changes, Nicky, that it's quite hard to kind of nail this down. Yeah, well, look, it's probably. Uh, it's, it's, we, the league might give some indication of where counties are at, I think. And uh, while, I, while I'm not expecting it, Really competitive. I think there will still be some very good games, and we'll get a better idea of uh, the players that are that are shaping up. Again, Waterford have lost a few players. Dublin have lost a few players. So where does that leave them? I do think uh, Galway's second year under Henry Shefflin will be a big year for both Galway and for Henry himself. To be fair, and I'm expecting a, a real big effort from Galway. I know he's again trying out new players. Uh, and it, it, there's going to be a lot of responsibility on on some key players that he's still going to be looking to towards uh, central defence. Uh, Garrod McInerney and uh, Dahi Burke and people like that. They're still his the core of his defence. He's going to have to see are they going to still be able to deliver for them. Uh, Cork, as I said, are really trying to make a big effort now with Pat Ryan. Uh, Clare, a bit unpredictable, probably in a huge dependence still on Tony Kelly. Uh, and as you said, uh, Michael, look, Limerick are still the are still the team to beat. The one thing I would say is that with every team like that, and Kilkenny were the same during their golden era, you know, you're while they will talk outwardly about having plenty of energy and wanting to keep going and wanting to win four in a row and all of that, at the same time, the lads are a year older, other things are happening in their lives as well, and uh, will they have the same enthusiasm? Outwardly, they will say they have, but deep down, will they have? And I think the pack are maybe getting a little bit closer but still, at the same time, if you ask me today who's the likely winners of the All Ireland, you'd still say Limerick fair. But I think it could be a lot tighter. Kilkenny got two points there last year, and uh, while Limerick were deserving winners, still a very tight final. Mm, Keen Lynch and Peter Casey back though. That does kind of alter things a little bit potentially. Um, Daily wonders your predictions for the year ahead. So you have said Limerick there, which I, and I presume you're going to say Limerick to win Munster. What about Leinster? I think that Leinster will be interesting. Again, I suppose, um, hard to know about Wexford. I mean, they, again, forget that there was plenty of enthusiasm down there in Wexford Park in the uh, Welsh Cup game. But that's much more now to the occasion as, as anything else. I think if uh, Kilkenny, I think, would be probably a little bit stronger than Wexford if the push comes to show. Very interested to see what Michael Donoghue will get out of uh, out of Dublin this year. And um, But Galway, I think, are the, I think Galway could be the team to win Leinster this year. Uh, I think that, it, again, from Henry's perspective, uh, it, it would be important for him to, win, to start winning and bringing a trophy uh, to Galway at this stage. And the, the Leinster Championship might very well be the one that uh, might work out at this year. Uh, but that doesn't mean, but I do think that Kenny will come back in. And, uh, you know, if they, they can develop under Derek Ling. If he can, if he can get the players who uh, were the mainstay of the team last year, I mean, he, he probably has six reasonably settled backs. Will they be the same this year? In my view, he'll have uh, obviously Tommy Welsh, Ewell Aller, and Mikey Butler in the full back line. In my view, the wing backs uh, this year, in my view, I think will probably be Derek Harkin and David Blanchfield. And uh, personally, I'd always play Parry Welsh centre back. I think he's the safest pair of hands that's there. Um, and maybe there'll be options up front. So Kenny will, be, will not be far off the mark now when, they, when everybody comes back together again. But I do think in Leinster it will be Galway. In in uh, in Munster, I still I still think Limerick will be the team to beat, but uh, I I would have a sneaking feeling that Cork might uh, might be there thereabouts. Just on Galway, Nicky, how important was it after you know going pretty well throughout the round robin stage, really disappointing Leinster final performance, to be able to dig in and get a result against Cork and then run Limerick pretty closely? Like it wasn't a dream first year for Henry, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I imagine he would have learned a lot, and the squad would have learned a lot, and while they while they were beaten, obviously in that other semi final. You kind of finish thinking, and I think a lot of people are thinking, there's a lot more in this. There's a lot there's a lot more to come from these lads. And like we were talking about the amount of Galway players playing Fitzgibbon, like they have an endless amount of talent coming through from all those uh all Ireland and winner minor teams as well. No, I agree with you there. I think they did I think they did very well last year. I mean they're very impressive again, Cork, and it was tight enough. It was only really in the latter stages and in the and in injury time that Limerick actually pulled away. That's often down to experience where uh where you have people who've been through the trenches, as it were, know how to get over the line. Galway maybe panicked a little bit at the end, missed a couple of scores they could have got from play. But the issue with Galway here is you've just alluded to all the good players they have playing uh, Fitzgibbon at the moment. And maybe, Michael, that in a way sums up Henry's dilemma. He has a whole lot of players at the one particular level. 
Uh, and uh, and I think that's the dilemma. How does he know what's the best uh, 15? Or if he if there's five or six who are automatically on the team, how does he pick the other 10? That is the biggest dilemma. And and that dilemma, by the way, is not just Hen- was not just Henry Shefflin's. That was there in the past with previous managers also. And maybe that's where players who can come through in the league. I mean, there was a, a just a note on screen there about Kilkenny and, and Galway being 50-50. I think that's a very that's a very fair uh, assumption. Like, there's not a lot between those two at the moment, uh, and uh, they could very well end up in a, in a Leinster final. Uh, but I think his dilemma is knowing what players to uh, to bring in and what players to leave out. It's like the old song. <laughs> and, What's the uh, old song? Will you give us the bar? Of it? Go on, oh, that's good. It's too early in the morning for that. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, you expecting a big team from uh, our big year from uh, Tipperary? I'm sure you have a soft spot for Tip. <laughs> ah, yes, but there are great rivals across across the border. In fact, um, I just—it's uh, very funny actually that during obviously my my own time then, which probably most list most people watching this wouldn't even remember. Um, but Jerry Henderson used to say that one of his biggest disappointments was never playing against Tipperary in a serious big All Ireland final or semi final all because Limerick, Tipperary were in the doldrums at that stage. But um, no. <laughs> Lee Cal, Lee Cal knows these players. I mean, he's, he's not just like any manager going into a county from outside type of thing. He's back among his own people. He knows these guys from underage and he'll know uh, what they can deliver. So I think there's a there's a good year coming from Tipperary. Again, it might take Liam Cal a year or two uh, to gel this group of players together. But I do think that uh, Tipperary will become serious players. Maybe not this year. Um, but I do think Cal will do a good job with him, along with Mikey Bevins and all that. They know these lads. They know what they're capable of. And I think they'll be, they, they, they've, they've proven it. And the players that they're going to use in the main will also know Cal and Bevins as well, because they've had him at underage to a large degree. So they'll know what to expect. So there's no, there's no great surprises there. Uh, Tipperary will be certainly contenders this year. Uh, you never, ever write off this. There's five or six counties there at any stage could be very serious contenders. Tip will be one of them, but uh, I just what are we talking about? Year. What are we talking about, Nicky? Contenders to be fourth or fifth in the Munster round robin? Ah, Jesus, no, no, no. I mean, <laughs> no, I think when you're starting out the years, what what teams what teams are likely to to figure at the latter stages of the provincial championship? Because bear bear in mind here, bear in mind here that you have a provincial championship. But then you have a, a kind of a, another championship starting all over again because you have three teams from within that out from in that five are going to be going forward into the latter stages. So you effectively have a second championship as well. So I mean, a, a team that comes second or, th- or third, you know, they, they can they can actually still be very very prominent in the in a in a championship. The only thing about it is is that because all the games are coming so close together, and this is always the caveat with every county. The structure of the championships now mean that the, both the provincial championship, uh, which is round robin, followed by the knockout stages, all, is all happening within a very condensed period of time. And if you lose one or two key players to hamstring injuries or other type of injuries, they just might not be, probably not be able to get back. And if you're missing a couple of those in any given year, that could be the difference between winning and losing. It's, it's as simple as that. And that's our championships now. And it, it applies in Gaelic football as well. But it's a real issue in hurling where you just don't have any time to recover and are adequate replacements sitting on the bench. There might be decent replacements, but they just not might be of the caliber of the player that is who's the rest of the championship. That's what managers have to contend with. That's why I suppose they, they, they want to give as much game time as possible during the course of the um, of the National League as well to see can they build up that absolute squad of 25 players knowing that any one of these players on any given day I could be asked to do the job and are they up for it and are they ready? Yeah, it just sounds like Vernie's the only one who thinks Tip won't get out of Munster this year. But well, I, the I, block, Nicky, do you think they'll get out? I know, well, Tip, well, they, well they'll get to Munster in the sense that they'll surely be one of the three. If uh, if, if not, we'll be having a post-mortem here in, uh, in July <laughs> about Tipperary. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'd expect him to... Uh, I'd expect him to if if you ask me, I, if you ask me, I, I have a sneaking feeling it could be uh, Limerick, Cork, and Tipperary. That's the stuff, Nicky. Well, Although, hopefully that, that Nicky, was up for a fall. There's a lot of there's a lot of Clare folk absolutely hammering me. I think Clare might finish last in Munster, but that's not like they think they're not going to get any points or be terribly bad or anything. I just think it's so competitive. Uh, it's very very difficult to pick your three coming out of Munster. Um, you've gone with you no know, Davy not getting through and Brian Law not as well all Ireland semi-finalists from last year and league winners from last year but that's how kind of volatile it is and that's how 
different opinions on this now, but Shane is happy anyway. That's the main thing anyway. Yeah, look, yeah. I might have it. Look, when the league is over, I might ha- I might have a different view, but I'm we're uh well, uh, there's a guy looking for me to save the date for the post marketing. That's fair enough. I think that's 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 a fair question because we're you know you're at the start of February now. You haven't seen any games worth worth talking about to bar the the pre seasons. So it 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 could be very it could be very different uh, come the thing. But Munster is very competitive. I mean, while there's a level of competitiveness in Leinster, I mean, obviously there's a there is probably realistically there's four teams for three places. <laughs> 